Today we're going deep into the science to figure out which exercises are truly the best for developing those lower pecs. And to do that, we're gonna need a cadaver. Just kidding, this is just my dumb wife. You're a real piece of shit. Here's the goal of this video. We're gonna go over what's already considered to be the best exercises for your lower chest, but we're also gonna use this EMG device to test to see if we can make those exercises even better. By changing everything from the width of the grip to the angle of the bench to even the path of the exercise itself. Here's what we currently know in regards to peer-reviewed research that's centered around those lower chest fibers. If you look at a diagram that depicts the pectoralis major, you're gonna see it's segmented into two separate parts. The clavicular head, which obviously comes off your clavicle, and the sternal head, which which comes off your sternum, but also at the very bottom, off your abdominals, more technically your abdominal sheath. But in a 2009 case study where they cut up a bunch of dead people, they found that the sternal head was actually often segmented into six, sometimes even seven individual parts. And that study was backed up by another one that found that the motor units of those individual segments could be independently controlled by your central nervous system. So. What does that mean to you? Well, more than anything, it means you have to be really purposeful with the angle or path that you can track down on. I'm telling you, you can aim. I can prove it. If I stack two EMG sensors, one at the lowest part of my outer pack and the other one just right on top of it, you're gonna see when I do a cable press down that's directly in line with my body, almost mimics a barbell dip, that I get the most excitement out of those motor neurons that are responsible for the lowest fibers in my chest. But the moment I pull my hand slightly away from me, it completely changes. And this isn't an extreme difference. I'm still on a downward angle. I'm not even to the point of a decline bench yet, but you can see my central nervous system is trying to excite those fibers that are even higher in my pec. See, you can aim. If you want to target the very bottom of your chest, the part that stems from your abdominal sheath and wraps around, then you need to start incorporating exercises that follow that same straight down plane of motion, which could be your first aha moment. If you're someone that only trains it by doing movements on a decline bench, which is usually anywhere from 15 to 30 degrees, then you're not actually targeting that under boob. So the first exercise I wanna to try to optimize is the decline bench press, because if you ask most people how they target their lower chest, they're gonna say this one. And the way I'm gonna set it up is I'm gonna put two EMG devices across my lower pec, one on the inside, one on the outside, so we can see what's happening throughout the entire length of the muscle, because we know regional hypertrophy is a thing, so if there's any weird shit going on, we're gonna know about it. I'm also gonna put one mid chest, that way we know if the bulk of the excitement ends up being there, then it's probably not a great exercise for that lower udder. The first test, grip width. Nice and close, a little wider than shoulder width, and then extremely wide. We have a winner. The close grip one was kinda of what you'd expect. It got the most activation out of the inner part of your lower chest, but not great anywhere else. The extremely wide grip did get activation out of the outer part of your chest, but there was really no clear difference between the mid pec and that lower part of your inner chest, so that one kind of sucks too. The slightly wider than shoulder width grip was the winner. It got the most activation out of the lower pec on the outside, then the inside, and the very least overall out of anyone I tested of that mid pec. So anytime you do decline press, Take a grip that's slightly wider than shoulder width. I'm gonna stop changing back and forth in between shirts. I just did that because I hate people that wear shirts like this. The other thing I wanted to test on here is to see what happens when we increase the angle. So when I really tilt my torso back and make it more of a steep decline. So let's take our newfound knowledge of the best grip and use that while we test whether laying flat on the bench or arching up is better. Arched was the winner. Got more activation in the places that we wanted and less in the places we didn't want. Next time you're in the gym, you go to decline press, hands slightly wider than shoulder width and arch your back to increase the angle of that decline. And the reason I would say arch your back instead of just sticking a plate underneath the bench is because when you do that, you naturally pinch those shoulder blades together, which puts you in a better position to press. The next exercise I wanna investigate are dips. Because I don't know about you, but for me, it seems like I do them differently every time I go to the gym. Sometimes I'll stay straight up and down. Other times I'll lean slightly forward. Sometimes I'll do a weird hybrid where I lean forward on the negative, lean back as I come up. Not because I know anything, it's just because it feels right. And I also want to test to see if there's a difference between a standard dip, one that's extremely wide, and a barbell dip. Really hope these don't win. I look the stupidest doing these. And it also makes me think of that Batman movie where Robin's entire dumb family died doing the trapeze. What kind of family activity is that? That ruined me as a kid. The straight up and down version of dips, they're off. Don't do them. Probably horrible for your shoulders, that's a hard pass. The version where I leaned forward the entire time that I thought was going to be too much mid-pec activation, Actually, it wasn't. 
it was slightly more, but not anything significant. So if you have the best mind muscle connection doing them that way, there is no downside, do those. But the slight edge goes to the one where I lean forward during the negative and then lean back during the positive. And it makes sense if you ever used one of those hoist dip machines, it takes you on that exact motion. I just assume the guy that created it was a giant man child who used to play on those electric horses they had outside of grocery stores. Turns out, they know what the hell they're doing. And that's the one I'm gonna do going forward. And then I got a wild hair up my ass to test the partial rep version of that rocking back and forth dip. Because if you saw the last leg video I did, then you know that training in a partial range of motion at long muscle lengths could potentially lead to even more hypertrophy. Pair that with the fact that the motor neuron excitement was almost identical to the full range of motion. And we know that training in a specific range of motion will actually get you stronger in that exact range. So cutting dips in half like that will actually make you stronger during the most vulnerable parts of the lift in that fully stretched position and help prevent injury. All of that shit to say, I'm gonna do both versions. The extremely wide dip, not great. I got very little excitement out of that inner low pec. I got some out of the outer and you could probably make a case to do this exercise if you really wanted to target that because we know regional hypertrophy is a thing, but I definitely wouldn't try to do it with this exercise. I would do it on this one. The amount of activation you get out of your chest on this one is even greater. And it's pretty safe to say that because it's the same weight. It's just body weight. I didn't get fatter walking from there to here. The barbell dips are a better exercise. Yes, I tested. Slightly wider than shoulder width is the best. To summarize dips, the best ones rock back and forth or just lean forward the entire time, but make sure either one you choose do a partial range of motion because it's gonna keep you safer in the long run. Extremely wide dips suck. And barbell dips with your hands slightly wider than shoulder width are a solid option, but just know that you're probably biasing towards the outer low pec. So if your inner low pec still looks like dilapidated balls, that's probably why. I probably should explain why I love this thing so much because before this, exercise selection was really based upon feel. Or I'd read a case study that somebody else did with the same piece of equipment, but they usually had a different goal in mind. They were testing for strength or power. I don't know, maybe they were in a highly competitive softball league. The only thing I care about is hypertrophy. So this is a game changer. It catches the signal your central nervous system sends to those nerve cells in the specific portion of the muscle you're testing. So you can see if you're actually hitting it the way you intend to. You can't control if it actually contracts, but it's safe to assume if it doesn't, you're pretty fucked up. The only thing better than that would be to have your training partner hold your tit the entire workout to make sure it's firing correctly, but there's even a risk there. You're one bad spot away from getting his tea bag stamped on your forehead. Decline dumbbell flies, which not a lot of people do. I don't know why they're great. If you do them, make sure you supinate on the way up. It's better in every way. It's like the difference between Fruit Loops and Apple Jacks. And if you don't know which one's better, you're an idiot. And the exercise you've probably been waiting for the most, cable flies. And I tested every single variation you could think of. Don't believe me? This is the remnants of all the testing. It's a long and boring process. It takes a lot of stimulants to get through. This is more of the testing. And that's, um... That's a jug of piss. So believe me, if you want to target your lower chest, then set the cables up nice and high and follow the actual line of your pec. That's the angle you want to contract down on. You know what is interesting though, is in the process of testing all these weird angles on the cables, at one point I pulled the handle towards me and you can even see the weird look on my face because I was shocked at how lit up my lower chest got. Your pec is responsible for a lot of shit. Adduction, internal rotation, extension and even flexion, which will make your brain hurt if you think about it. But once I saw that, I immediately thought of those classic Arnold pullovers that he used to do, which I stopped doing years ago because some guy convinced me that they didn't actually work your chest. So I set up a decline bench, tested it, and not bad. Fuck, I gotta piss again. My jug is full. Programs are linked below, only 20 bucks, so go unfuck yourself for Christmas.